Now let's go into Exodus chapter 1 because the fathers of Israel, the 12 sons of Jacob, that generation died. And before they die, in that 30-year period, they proliferate greatly. Now we have a new pharaoh that come up that's going to rule the Egyptians who don't know Joseph and don't know the benefit that Joseph did for his people, the Egyptians. And look at what his mindset was. Exodus chapter 1, we're going to start reading in verse 8. Exodus 1 and verse 8. All right, my brother, go ahead. Now there rose up a new king over Egypt, which knew not Joseph. And he said unto his people, Behold, the people of the children of Israel are more and mightier than, uh, than we. Come on, let us deal wisely with them, lest they multiply. And it come to pass that when, when there falleth out any war, they join also unto our enemies and fight against us, and so get them up out of the land. Now we got a new pharaoh that rules over Egypt, and his mindset is the children of Israel who came down here as guests are more and mighty. We didn't outpopulate the Egyptians. So we're going to have to do something with these people lest any war break out, they join with our enemies and take over our land. Right now, we want to be an Egyptian. But back then, the Egyptians knew the difference between the Israelites and their own people. Even though, like I said, we might resemble them, we are two separate people. So he said, we're going to have to do something about this situation. We're going to have to get them up out of the land. Well, they couldn't get us out of the land because the Lord said in that land he was going to make of us a great nation, right? That's right. So this is what they decided to do. Continue at verse 11. Therefore they did set over them taskmasters to afflict them with their burdens, and they built for Pharaoh treasure cities, Python and Ramesses. So they put taskmasters over us, and they worked us real hard, and we built them treasure cities. No different from any other slavery that we'd have been in in any other nation. They work us, and we build their country, and that's the extent of it. So our forefathers has basically built the whole world. He took my water. Why you take my water? Oh, okay. They don't want to see on TV what type of water we drink, huh? Okay. <laughs> okay. I only do this every so often. I ain't, I ain't used to all of it. Okay. So let's uh, continue on at uh, verse 12. <laughs> but the more they afflicted them, the more they multiplied and grew. And they were grieved because of the children of Israel. The more the Egyptians afflicted us, the more we multiplied and grew. And the Egyptians was grieved because of us. Just like you got the people in this country. The more injustice they do to us, the more we multiply and grow. And they are really grieved because of us. They don't know what to do with us but we are still here standing them in the face. Continue to read. And the Egyptians made the children of Israel to serve with rigor, and they made their lives bitter with hard bondage, in mortar and in brick, and in all manner of service in the field, all their service wherein they made them serve was with rigor. So this is our very first captivity as a people. And when you look at this captivity, this is no different from the captivity that we came into when we came to this country. It was hard bondage out in the fields, and it was made with vigor. 